Hello, my name is Steve Mann and welcome to Paper Classroom. In this session we'll be looking at the sheet formation of paper. In this session we'll be answering the following questions. How do we get stock onto the forming fabric? What do we mean by efflux ratio? And what are all these rolls on a paper machine? Do all paper machines look alike? Do they all have a single horizontal flat forming fabric or are there other configurations? And finally, what is a drainage element? In these next six slides, I hope I'll answer all these questions for you. Okay, so in our paper mill, we've bought our raw materials, we've done work on it, we've cleaned it, we've controlled the flow, we've put it through one of many different types of manifolds, and eventually we enter the flow box, which will spread out the stock and squirt it onto the forming fabric. Um, flow boxes have undergone quite a bit of, of history. The original flow box was this device that you see here. This was known as the open floor box because as you can see it was open to the air. The problem with this is you've only got gravity to squirt stock onto the wire and so there's a, a speed limitation. So for that reason you very rarely see these floor boxes anymore. If you really need to go fast you need to be able to apply pressure. And so this second floor box was developed and this was known as the pressurized floor box and as you can see, there is an air cushion here. Another name for this was the pneumatic floor box because it was operated by air. These two tubes here allow the operator to either push air in or apply vacuums to reduce the pressure. That worked for a while, but there were problems. As the liquid levels here rise and fall, fibres can get deposited on the sides. That can either lead to mould or they can dry out and come off and they can block up the exit from the floor box that we call the slice. The third generation was the so-called hydraulic floor box. Here with the hydraulic floor box everything is completely filled with liquid so you have no air gaps, no levels to rise and fall so no chance for mould, no chance for big lumps of uh, paper to dry out and, and cause problems later. So this was the third generation and the fourth generation if you look at all modern mills now what are they all putting in? They're all putting in something known as a, a dilution floor box and again that's something that I talk about in my uh, my face-to-face sort of -face lectures. <coughs> Efflux ratio, strange term, what does efflux ratio mean? Well, efflux ratio is the speed of the stock coming out onto the wire to the speed of the wire itself. And there are two extremes of this, as we see illustrated here with these two rather large fibres. The first case is what we call drag. If the stock comes out of the slice slower than the fabric is travelling. Then when the front of that fibre hits the wire, it, it will be instantly sped up. So the fibre will be dragged and it will drag it in a straight line following the line of the wire. So all your fibres will be machine direction oriented. That will give you extremely good machine direction tensile strengths, but very poor cross direction tensile strengths. The other alternative is the stock comes out of the wire, out of the slice, sorry, faster than the wire is travelling. Well, what happens in that case? Well, the front of the fibre hits the wire and instantly slows down to the wire speed. And the end, other end of the fibre carries on travelling fast and will go past so it will rush, it will tumble over. And when that fibre tumbles over, it could land in any orientation. This will give a much more random orientation to all the fibres and therefore 
the tensile strengths in the machine direction and the tensile strengths in the cross direction are more likely to be the same. And this is where the term square comes from. When the properties of a sheet in the machine direction are the same as the properties of the sheet in the cross direction, then we say this is a square sheet. So I hope that takes care of uh, efflux ratio for you. Let's move along now to the rolls. There are many rolls on a paper machine. Uh, I heard that something like 70% of the cost of a paper machine is all due to rolls. But that means including things like press rolls and even drying cylinders because they are roll shaped. Okay, so here is a typical diagram of a typical Fordrinia paper machine with normal equipment. So let's just have a look at the type of rolls that are there. Here we have the floor box, the stock comes out of the floor box and it could land initially here. And the first roll is known as the breast roll. And the breast roll has two functions. One function is to return the wire to the horizontal position and another function is to support the wire. Now where the wire and the turning breast roll part here, then you're creating an outgoing nip. That will create vacuum and so it can assist in dewatering. On old fashioned machines, well originally on all machines, there was a, a device called a table roll. The table roll was a, a small uh, roll, maybe about uh, this diameter, and went all the way across the machine. One job was to support the wire, but as the roll turned, then it also created an outgoing nip and it also created extra vacuum to drag the water through. However, as machines got faster, and I'm talking about beyond 140, 150 meters a minute, then the damage that table rolls did to the sheet outweighed the good that they did. And so table rolls fell into disuse and they were replaced by foils. Foils are angled devices. The angle between the surface of the foil and the wire could be anywhere from a half to three degrees. And their job is to doctor the water from beneath the wire and also to create vacuum to suck more water through the wire. Following the foils there, we would then have uh, a, uh, vacuum boxes and I'll talk about vacuum boxes later. Another roll on the machine is the dandy roll. Now the dandy roll is the only roll that sits on top of the sheet. And the job of the dandy roll, the main job, is to put in the watermark that you see uh, in security papers. The dandy roll shuffles the fibres away a little bit, creates areas of lower density and therefore better light transmission. More vacuum boxes we'll talk about later. The cooch roll. It's from the cooch roll that the sheet is removed and goes into the press section. Some cooch rolls are solid. The cooch roll I've drawn here has a, a vacuum unit in it. So the vacuum unit will also help to dewater the sheet. But if you're not careful and you apply too much vacuum, you can actually suck fibres and filler particles out of the sheet and create what's called a shadow marking fault. Okay, the wire travels around the cooch roll and eventually comes to the drive roll. Now the drive roll is the turning roll that actually grips the sheet, uh, the, uh, the wire and turns it around. So that's where all the power comes from. Following that, you know on the underside of the forward linear, the sheet has left it and we're in the process of returning the wire around back to the horizontal, horizontal position. But there are other jobs to do while we're down there. Often the first roll we may call term a wash roll and very often you'll have um, a shower here on the ingoing nip. As the water comes to the ingoing nip it gets forced through the forming fabric uh, so, it, so it gives us some backwashing hence the term wash roll. Now of course when you put a wire on as it's being turned over time it will stretch. If it stretches then the tension will reduce. If the tension reduces, lots of problems, including the driver roll can't grip it enough. Therefore, 
we have to constantly monitor and control the tension and keep the tension the same. So we have a tension roll for doing that. This is just a normal return roll, as is this one. And here we have a guide roll. Why this wire is travelling down the machine, then it will tend to wander slightly to one way, slightly the other way. And we've got to take control of that to make sure it doesn't go too far one way or the other. So we have sensors that will detect the position of the wire and then a guide roll. This roll will move to adjust the path of the wire to get it back on track. So that takes care of the, uh, the rolls on a paper machine. I think if we move on now, we can look at paper machine configurations. One of the questions was, are all paper machines horizontal flat wires? Well, the answer to that is no. This is a nice sort of schematic of a traditional paper machine. This dotted line here represents the path of the wire. And here we have the floor box or the head box. So that's just what we've seen in the previous slide. Where you have a situation where you use a very, very low consistency and you've got lots of water to remove, then it's been shown that operating an inclined wire will help to remove water. So there are inclined wire machines. Another way of removing water more quickly is rather than simply draining from the bottom, drain from the bottom and drain from the top. So in this case, the stock comes through here into this gap, water is sucked through this wire and there are bits of equipment where water can also be sucked upwards. So you can drain the water quickly. The advantages of this are that you'll have a less two-sided sheet and uh, you've got more drainage so you can have faster production. There's also this. This is known as a twin wire fordrinia, whereas that one's a twin wire former. With a twin wire fordrinia, you have stock coming out of this floor box onto this bottom wire, stock coming out of this floor box onto this top wire, and the two sheets come together top side to top side and then out through there into the press section. The advantage of this is you can have lower grammage sheets, therefore you can drain them quicker. Again, you've got two sheets draining, you'll have uh, more even fines distribution through the sheet, you have a less two-sided sheet, but you've got to make sure that the two plies will stick together. And there's also, you know, you see it often in the newsprint industry, what we call vertiformers. People did experiments at one time with putting the head box here and having the two wires coming down, but that was very quickly rejected. Still successful today is the idea of squirting the stock up and having two wires coming up and the stock gets caught in between those two wires and around. So, as you can see, this is not the only way of uh, organising paper manufacture. We said there was table rolls and breast rolls. If we look at drainage elements now, we said that the breast roll could also act as a drainage element because of its outgoing nip. We said that table rolls could operate as a drainage element because of the outgoing nip. So let's have a look at what other drainage elements there are. There are foils. So a foil is an angle device. If the wire is travelling along in this direction, the foil is angled like that. And this angle here can vary from a half a degree to three degrees. That essentially works as an outgoing nip creates a vacuum. Once you've gone beyond traditional foils, there's a, a cute little device there known as a vacuum foil. And the idea is to get five, six, seven foils all together, put, mount them on the surface of a box, collect all the water in that box, let all the water drop down a, a pipe or a drop leg. And as the water drops down to the pipe, then it creates another vacuum to help dewater. So the interesting thing to note about the breast roll, the table roll, the foil and the vacuum foil is you're using natural forces to create vacuum to aid dewatering. So you're doing it as cheaply as possible. 
Here we have high vacuum boxes. For high vacuum boxes, you really need to use a vacuum pump. So for the first time, you're actually spending money, you're consuming money minute by minute with electricity, turning around a vacuum pump uh, and uh, creating high vacuums in that way. And again, when we do this thing in more detail in my face-to-face -face courses, we'll look at the different um, uh, vacuum profiles and water removal profiles. The Couturol, we also mentioned in the last slide, some Couturols are solid, most Couturols are vacuum Couturols to assist final dewatering. Well, that takes care of the uh, paper formation. I hope you enjoyed that unit and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the future.